Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, home of big bland buildings, the president, and God. Let me explain. A few years ago, my class went on a four-day trip to Washington, D.C., and it went like this. On the first day, we had to arrive at the school around 5 a.m., which, not to brag or anything, wasn't a big deal to me, since I'm awake at that point most nights googling happy kiwis anyway. We had to get our bags checked for contraband, which I had no shortage of, Exhibit A, and then we all had to pack into the buses like sardines to begin the first leg of our trip. Nothing happened for the first few hours. People were either asleep or gambling. But then we finally got some action when we stopped at, uh, when we stopped to get lunch at a mall food court. When we pulled up to the mall, the bus driver saw that there were two separate lots for buses and cars, but sadly he was both colorblind and dyslexic, leading to him drifting into the car lot and, si- and sideswiping somebody's vehicle. The bus driver had, and the chaperones had to stay outside sorting out insurance for the next hour, which was okay because it's exa- cause that's exactly how long it took me to stand in line at Auntie Anne's, only for them to inform me that they didn't have any more pretzel nuggets. The insurance got figured out, and I hopped back onto the bus nugget list, preparing for the next section of our drive. People were finally awake at this point, which probably explains why at a certain point during the drive, a massive blanket fort began absorbing all of the seats. It got shut down about, about after about half an hour. Rip, blanket for Tasha, we'll never forget you. And then we finally got, our, got to our last stop before Washington, D.C., Gettysburg. We walked around for a while, learning about cannons, ate at an off-brand Golden Corral, and then finally got back onto the oversized metal horse to get to D.C. We looked at the Iwo Jima Memorial, which was actually pretty cool. I don't have anything snarky to say about that. And then it was finally time to go off to the hotel to get some rest before the next day. This is where things get weird. Me and my three roommates dicked around for a while before deciding to go to bed, and then God arrived. My roommate Max began crawling around on all fours like a crippled spider on crack, leading to a Dark Souls-level conflict taking place in our room. Me and my other two roommates crowded on one bed back-to-back to view every possible angle, while Max was jumping off of desk chairs holding a box of Cheez-Its and releasing a high-pitched screeching, which I determined to be some sort of pain-infused mating call. All this was made worse by the fact that Max is both the thinnest and palest man I know, meaning we could pretty much see his insides because of the reflection of the moonlight through a window. After about an hour-long exorcism, we finally settled down to get half an hour of sleep before we got woken up the next morning for breakfast. We went down to the main hall of the hotel, got served our literal green eggs and ham, that food was nasty, and our friends told us that they got a noise complaint the last night for literally displaying cards, which we found hilarious considering we didn't get one for our, de- for our demon demolition derby. We spent much of that day at Arlington Cemetery, where I accidentally smuggled in my contraband from earlier, and then we went to the Holocaust Museum, which, for the sake of my future, I refuse to make any jokes about. The most fun part of that day was honestly just walking around harassing civilians. My friend Ben even made a Secret Service agent laugh, so that was pretty cool. After a long day, we finally got back to our hotel room, where the demon virus spread to my roommate Josh, meaning we now had two feral hyena men crawling around in our room for an hour, fueled by uncooked tortillas. The next day was the last full day of the trip, which, after we ate our breakfast of lukewarm coffee and waffles, was spent entirely at the Capitol and different Smithsonian museums. I didn't risk trying to smuggle my contraband into the literal Capitol building, so he was forced to stick on the bus for an hour or two. Once again, not much happened on this day other than getting to see an incredibly sexy man in a display case at dinner. And then, out of respect, we thought it best to continue the demon fight tradition for this night as well to end off our trip with a bang. The next day was just a long drive home, thus bringing the Washington, D.C. experience to an end. Did I learn anything? Yes. Don't play with cards in a hotel room. Play with your lives instead. That's about it. Peace out.